broadcasting from Woodstock, Georgia, welcome to Soul Solutions, a show where we overcome our fears and our limiting beliefs. I'm your host, author, and certified life coach, Terry Kozlowski. Episode 20, How to Keep Our Joy in Everyday Life. Are we joyful in our everyday lives, or do we allow the clouds of our day-to-day living to bury our delight? The source of all joy comes from spirit. So we always have it, just like the sun is always shining above the clouds, our joyfulness is always with us. But many believe that the ordinary moments of our lives, the daily grind, contain no joy. However, this is a lie of the ego. We have to be aware of the small and simple pleasures in our everyday lives. This awakening can occur when we are connected with our souls and with others because we realize that searching outside of ourselves for joy isn't required because it rises from within us. Every moment of our lives has the potential to be joyous if we open our eyes. What are we paying attention to? Where our attention goes, so does our awareness. If we focused on the negative aspects of our daily lives, then that is what we see, and it creates an unhappy life. But if we choose to concentrate on the positive, we can build a blueprint for living a joyful day. If we wake up on the wrong side of the bed and don't readjust our mood from the start, then it will attract more negativity into our day. Why? Because it will blind us to any good that occurs. Everywhere there are simple joys for us to observe, if we pay attention. The feel of a cozy Sherpa blanket the smell of freshly ground coffee, the sound of children giggling, the painted sunset on the ocean, and the feel of an embrace are all joyful moments we take for granted. Is negativity overtaking our joy? Are we giving other people's opinions more weight than our inner voice? We've all done this at some point because the lack of self-confidence or we knew we needed to find an expert to help us with something. But we need to remember that only we know what's best for us. And only we live with the consequences for going for our dream or regretting that we didn't take the leap of faith. Are we allowing fear to keep us stagnant? When we allow the egoic mind to keep us in a fearful state, we take no action and therefore we wallow in self-pity and unhappiness. We know the ego's job is to protect us. But protecting us from not trying to achieve a goal or dream is actually harming us. Moving out of our comfort zone allows us to grow. This growth moves us forward towards our dreams. Even if our attempt wasn't as successful as we liked, we learned from the experience. Are we being selfish? Suppose we are focusing on ourselves by wallowing in our sorrows or complaining about our lives. In that case, we are attracting more negativity. The fastest way out of this self-indulgence is by helping others. Acts of kindness remind us of the connection we have with others and how they bring joy to our lives. Are we overscheduling ourselves? It's hard to see the simple joys in our lives when we feel so busy. I used to do this and then feel crummy for not completing my to-do list. But I also used to think that if I was busy, that I was working towards my success. But being busy doesn't mean that we are making progress if we don't have clear goals and vision. Are we so busy that we are neglecting our relationships? Any connection we have with others needs nurturing. The only way to foster them is to give them time. Time to listen, time to show our concern, and time to build trust. Are we getting our alone time? I love my alone time. I'm at a point in my life that I know I need to take the time away from others to recharge. Otherwise, my relationships suffer because I am not my best self. This self-care routine is vital and should be on our weekly schedule. This time also includes our daily reflection, meditation, journaling, or prayer, which are fundamental for us to commune with our souls. If we feel too busy, we cause ourselves stress over something we have control over, our schedules. Time management skills are learnable and can help us overcome the stress we cause ourselves 
when we put too much on our calendars? Are we avoiding responsibility? Blaming others for the outcomes in our lives keeps us joyless. If we blame others, we avoid responsibility for our choices, and we will always be in a place we don't like. I did this because my mother was responsible for my childhood trauma, but every choice I made afterward was mine to make. Her reactions may have influenced me, but I was responsible for what I did and how I reacted. Until I took responsibility for those choices, I gave up my power to heal. Taking responsibility for our part in disagreements is crucial for us to have authentic communication in our relationships. If we pause for a moment and think about the arguments we've had with those closest to us, many of them we can't remember what we were arguing about. Obviously, the subject matter was unimportant. We need to apologize for the role we played in the dispute so the relationship can heal and grow. We also need to let go of grudges that the egoic mind holds on to. The ego sees the people of the world as potentially harmful, but that isn't the case a majority of the time. Therefore, holding on to resentments only harms us by taking away our joy in the present so that we can stew about the past. Are we ignoring something important? When we don't pay attention to something important, the universe will keep trying to get our attention. The longer we ignore the signs, the more harmful the signs can become. For example, I spent years having upset stomachs, which I thought was because of my anxiety. Then I got awful for about two days. On the third day, I went to the doctor only because my husband forced me. I had waited too long. I had acute appendicitis. As I was getting a CAT scan, my appendix ruptured. Emergency surgery, a week in the hospital, followed by peritonitis, which almost killed me. While I was receiving IV antibiotics at home for three weeks, I realized that my body was trying to tell me to deal with my fears because it was causing me to be sick. The universe will force us to listen if we ignore the signs and clues it whispers to us over the years. When we aren't paying attention to those things in our lives, we become ungrateful for what we have. The ego thinks we need more stuff when we need to refocus and see the blessings all around us. We see the abundance in our lives and move our attention to see the positive, creating a joyful life through gratitude. How to see the joy in ordinary moments. It's easy to find joy in our lives. It's merely a matter of opening our eyes and noticing them because they are everywhere. As I already mentioned, gratitude changes our every day into joyful times. What other ways are there that we can recognize joy in the ordinary? Daily rituals, morning meditation, Prayer and journaling are rituals that I use to ground myself so my day begins with peace. Pick one or two things that resonate with you and try them tomorrow morning to help refocus the day on calmness. I'm sure that there will be an improvement in overall well-being throughout the day. Take time to play. Children are generally joyful. Why? Because they play a lot. The act of play is essential for us to have balance in our life. Play comes in many forms, a creative outlet, relaxation, or a stress reliever. Play is about having fun. Adults still learn through play, which prevents memory issues as we get older. So turn on the music and dance, do a crossword puzzle, or get out a good romance novel. Whatever you enjoy, do it. Spend time in nature. When we are outside on the beach or hiking in the woods, we feel balanced, clear, and creative. Scientific studies show that spending time in the great outdoors increases well-being, gives us more energy, decreases stress, provides better sleep, increases self-esteem, and we become more productive. We don't have to hike every day. Still, something as simple as having our morning tea on our back deck can skyrocket the joy in our lives. 
How to joyfully live with others. Doesn't a bear hug from a loved one feel fabulous? Or holding hands with our child? Simple things we get great joy from, but take for granted each day. Physical contact with loved ones helps increase our immune system, improves trust, and makes us feel safe. It also decreases the stress hormone cortisol in our bodies. Did you know that you release oxytocin when you meet someone and shake their hand, which makes us feel calmer? Friendly touch promotes trust and connection. Even petting our beloved dog or cat releases oxytocin and makes us feel better. Be kind. When we look for ways of helping others, we increase our joy. Smiling at someone, opening the door, giving a compliment are simple ways to pass along the kindness. In doing so, we feel good, and so does the other person. It's contagious because even those who witness kind acts are more likely to do a kind act soon after the event occurs. Being kind helps us feel connected to others and more optimistic about life. Laugh. Laugh with one another. Laughter has many benefits from releasing tension to improving our health. So laugh at a silly joke. Humor neutralizes tense situations, and we all love to be around someone humorous because it just feels good to laugh. Allowing joy to rise from within. When we forgive ourselves, we open ourselves up to joy. Because we are hardest on ourselves, the egoic mind turns our joy into criticism quickly. By being compassionate to ourselves allows us to reframe the story we tell into one that is empowering. Notice the self-talk and be sure that we are speaking lovingly to ourselves. Using positive affirmations can help deal with negative mindsets to reframe our thinking. Stay in the present moment. Staying in the present moment means we are open to feeling joy because it can only be felt in the present moment. If we are feeling anxious, we are in the future. If we're feeling depressed, we are in the past. Both places, we can't feel joy or peace. Breathe to bring us back into the present moment. When we are fully present, we also can enter a flow state, one of connection with spirit. In this state, we are our most creative, joyful, and most at peace because we are truly our authentic selves. Get quiet and listen to the soul's voice. When we live from the heart and not the mind, we enable joy to be a part of our everyday lives. From this heart space, the ordinary becomes astonishing. Our self-imposed limitations fade away as we see the infinite possibilities that our lives can take. And joy bubbles up to the surface consistently. Moving forward with new eyes. Like the sun shining above the clouds, joy is always present in what we call our ordinary lives. But our life is anything but commonplace once we open our soulful eyes and see the miraculous all around us. Do you need help to see the joy in your life? Do you want a strategy to help you overcome the ego's limiting beliefs and live a successful life? If so, please reach out to me at terrykozlowski.com and we can put together an action plan for you to create the life you desire. Please join me next week as we discuss, do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? Thanks for listening to Soul Solutions with Terry Kozlowski. If you'd like the show and want to learn more, check out terrykozlowski.com where you can find the links to everything we talked about in this episode. Please subscribe to the show so you'll never miss an episode as we overcome our fears and our limiting beliefs.